Hey everybody, Rob D'Alessio, Taste of Retirement, and what we're doing today is a Latin American favorite, carne asada. Beautiful marinated skirt steak with some homemade guacamole, a couple lime wedges. Come on, let me show you how we do it. Okay, welcome back, carne asada. It's an amazing summertime grilling just sensation. And what we do is we actually use meat that's called skirt steak. The thing about skirt steak is just so you know, that's meat that comes from the rib cage. And there's inside skirt and there's outside skirt. We're gonna use outside skirt today. So this is what you get carne asada at Mexican restaurants. If you get fajitas, it used to be this, but now that's flat meat or ball tip or something else like that. But you wanna really trust your butcher because what you have to do is you have to get it peeled. And so there's a membrane and all kinds of other things like that. You don't wanna deal with that. So you go get your skirt steak, trust your butcher. And I like to cut it in nice pieces like this. This is about a 12, in, 12 ounce piece, give or take. And so what we're gonna do here is, it's very, very simple. We're just gonna use some fajita seasoning. This is my preferred fajita seasoning. And be pretty liberal on this, because when you cook, it's kinda salty, but that salt's gonna really help to form a crust on the meat, and it's just gonna add a lot more flavor later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do both sides, and then we're gonna let it sit and marinate for about an hour. And just so you know, one of the things that's very important when you're grilling meat is that you wanna make sure that the meat gets to room temperature before you put it on the grill, because that way you'll grill it, the heat will evenly disperse, and then you gotta let it rest afterwards. So then we're gonna take some red wine vinegar. Be careful that it doesn't pour out too fast on you, so I always like to put my fingers over the top just in case. And then you're gonna do some Worcestershire sauce. Now, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Who knows if they're saying it right? It's the hardest word to say in the English language, but it's Worcestershire sauce. It's good, it'll add some depth to the meat and, and some nice, rich flavor. And what I love about the skirt steak is it's a super simple meal to make. As long as you have about an hour or so to, to get it really marinating, get the grill lightning hot, and, and then you can do different things with it. You can make tacos with it. We're gonna make some homemade guacamole with it. And, and it's actually funny. I, I actually used to hate guacamole, but I didn't know that I actually liked it until my wife finally made me try it. And then I liked it. And then I thought, man, well, I wanna try to make it and, and make it as good as it possibly can. So. All right, you're rubbing this mixture through, and then what you do is you just turn it over and you do the same exact thing on the other side. And then, like I said, we're just gonna let it marinate for about an hour. You can go a little bit longer if you want, but you don't wanna go too long. Okay, so the meat is marinated. It's been marinating for a little over an hour. It's nice and room temperature. We've got the grill to about 600, 650 degrees. It's about as hot as it'll get. So what we wanna do, then we wanna lay the, lay the meat out on the grill. And you wanna make sure that there's no wrinkles or anything like that. And that sizzle is just one of the happiest sounds there's ever been. So make sure that you've got some good area. And a lot of grills have hot spots and cool spots. If that's the case on your grill, you wanna make sure that this meat gets on the hottest spot there is. Now, the thing with skirt steaks, some pieces are thicker than others, so you gotta be careful. It'll be very difficult to cook at the same temperature throughout the whole thing. But if you're cooking for a lot of people, that may actually help you out because some people might like medium. Some people might like medium rare. Some people might like it higher than like medium well or well done. And honestly, those people shouldn't eat steak anymore. They should just eat chicken or something else, vegetables, I don't know. But anyway, the meat's sizzling. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go about five minutes total each side. So about two and a half, and then we're gonna put some grill marks on it. So I'm gonna close the lid and then we're gonna let it cook and let it do its thing. All right, we're there. The meat's done, we're gonna let it do its thing at this point. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off, we're gonna place it on a nice clean sheet tray. You wanna make sure you rinse it off if you use that when it was marinating. Take the pieces off, and then I cannot stress to you enough, it is super important that you let that meat rest, okay? Because when you're grilling it at really high temperatures, all those juices are gonna constrict, and that's fine. But if you cut into it right as soon as you take it off the grill, all the juices will run out. And so you don't want that, right? You want the every bite to be juicy. So we're gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes, which is perfect timing, because I'm gonna make some guacamole while it rests. 
All right, so the meat's resting, which is one of the most important things it can do. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make some guacamole. And so with me, guacamole is super simple. I didn't used to like it, I love it now, and I get requested to make it all the time. So I use four avocados, large Hass avocados, and you gotta make sure they're ripe. Like if they're super green or if they're rock hard, that's not gonna work. When you push on the sides, you wanna make sure they give just a little bit. If they give a lot, they're gonna be bruised on the inside. Doesn't make them taste any different, but you do eat with your eyes, so that could be a problem. So we've got four avocados, we've got a lime. This is the key. To get a lot of juice out of the lime, you wanna have a thin rind, okay? So you'll see sometimes it has a thick rind or it's really porous, you won't get as much juice. This is a nice, shiny, thin rind. You take it and you roll it, and that's actually gonna bruise the pulp a little bit and it'll help you get a lot more juice out of it. I'll show you here in a minute. And then what we do is we do cayenne pepper, we do garlic powder, and we do some cumin. So what I have here is a pico that I made, pico de gallo that I made. Basically it's tomatoes, red onions, cilantro, and jalapenos. And I dice them fine. Now, if you don't feel like doing this, your, your grocery store in the produce department will sell this fresh. Buy that, use it. I start, and I, I start with some salt. Now, you can sometimes make this too salty, so be really careful. You can always add more salt. And let that salt sit for a little bit because it's gonna bring the juices out in those tomatoes. Then, you take the avocado, be very careful you don't slice your hand open, and you cut it in half. There's a pit in the middle of it, in case you didn't know that by now, most people know that. Twist, and then you'll see the pit right there. You take the heel of your knife, insert it, twist, and you get the, the pit out, okay? And we're gonna do that again. Okay, so we've got all of the seeds or all of the pits out of the avocados. A couple little brown spots, but nothing worth worrying about. They look perfectly right. Now, some people will like to take a knife and they'll score it, and that's fine, but I actually like to take the half out because what we're gonna do is we're gonna marinate it in the lime juice for just a couple minutes before we end up mashing it. So. You take your spoon, and the good thing is the, the skin or the peel or the rind, if you would, on the avocado, it's really thick, so you can kind of feel when you hit the other side so you don't go through the back. And you just kind of twist away, and then you get almost all of that in there. Don't worry if you leave a little bit left in the peel, that's okay. Okay, so we've got all the meat from the avocado, it's in the bowl. Uh, again, I'm just gonna roll that just a couple more times just to do it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it in half and it's gonna be super juicy. So you take both halves and you squeeze, and I like to twist when I squeeze. You, that way you'll maximize as much juice as you can to get out. Now, feel like all the juice is out of there, right? No, it's not. So what you do is you take those two halves and you press them together and you'll get a ton more juice out of there. Now, we've got enough juice in there. What you just wanna do at that point is you wanna make sure that that lime juice touches all the parts of those avocados. So, toss it around a little bit. That meat is really sensitive. You don't wanna bruise it too much, okay? Now, the salt, you can see it started to kinda of render out some of the juices from the tomatoes. Now, it doesn't matter what order you go here. So, cayenne pepper, and, and honestly, you can make it as spicy as you want or you can make it as mild as you want. Again. I caution all the time. The only thing is you can't take the spice out, so you can always add more. Garlic powder, same scenario. But I'm Italian, so honestly, the more garlic, the better, it's fine. And then cumin, which is one of the most underrated seasonings or spices. Throw that in there, it's gonna add some richness to it, some depth to it. Okay, so you got all those in there, and what I do is I just stir it up. Now, some people like to eat just this pico mix itself, but it is pretty spicy, so I warn you that. And what I do here now, I just let that sit just for a little bit, and then you've got your avocados, I've got a potato masher, this is my favorite one, I use it for a lot of different things, and you just you'd go in and you twist, and you twist, and you twist, so I would use a potato masher at that point. If you want it super smooth, I guess you could use an immersion blender, I wouldn't do that, you'll end up bruising that meat more than you would ever want to do that. And then here in a minute, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold the pico in because you don't wanna just mix it because then you're just gonna end up having like an avocado puree. And a lot of people like to have some nice bite and some nice chunks in their guacamole. So that's what we're gonna do. 
All right, so now it's getting nice and creamy, but there's still some nice chunks in there. I always like to make sure I scrape off the rest of the avocado because, I mean, one, it's pretty expensive, right? So you want to make sure you get it all, but two, it's delicious. So make sure you get all that goodness. I fold in in batches because if you put all that in there, it might be too spicy. Or you might have some people that don't like that much spice. So you got to know who you're dealing with. That's about all we'll go with for today. If we need to make it more spicy, we can. And you just fold it in from the outside in, from the outside in, and you keep going and you've got your guacamole made. Now, what's beautiful is the meat is done resting. We're gonna let the guacamole rest for a minute and let those flavors incorporate. And then it's time to eat. Okay, so the meat is rested. All that juice is now incorporated back throughout the muscle. Still got some on the tray, but that's okay. Now, this is very, very important. When you are cutting skirt steak, there's grains along here, and you wanna cut across the grain. Otherwise, it, the bite will be a little bit tough for you. So I like to go in sections, and then that way I can cut across the grain. And then that way, that's how you're gonna serve it. And if you make tacos, that's fine. If you're serving it to people, that's fine. You can serve it in larger chunks, but I still like to go ahead and cut it. All right, we have the steak laid out. I like to make the presentation as nice as possible because you actually do eat with your eyes a little bit too. We've got the guacamole. All those flavors have melted all the way through the avocado and everything, so now we've got the fresh guacamole. I like to go ahead and put a nice healthy dollop right there on the plate. Maybe even a little bit extra because who doesn't love that? Right. And then I've got a little bit of cilantro just for garnish. And then some Mexican cotija cheese. It adds a little bit of that nutty flavor, a little bit of salty. Just sprinkle that throughout. And you have it. A simple Mexican favorite, Latin American favorite, carne asada, marinated with some lime wedges, a nice, beautiful guacamole. It's absolutely fantastic. All right, there you have it, carne asada. We're going into summertime. This is an easy, simple grilling sensation. Marinated skirt steak, homemade guacamole, a couple lime wedges just to add a little more tang to it. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, go to our page, like and subscribe. You'll see amazing content just like this. I'm Rob D'Alessio, and this was The Taste of Retirement.